it is about resilience. Obviously, with running 50 or 105 miles, there's going to be a huge element of resilience. You don't want a medal that was easy. You want to be able to get a medal and say, I've really, really worked for that. I achieved something. If something's meant to be challenging, then it's meant to be challenging. Unless you're on the verge of failing, then it isn't challenging. I've had two different experiences actually from uh, running the race twice. I'm just quite curious to see what the third time has in store for me. The first time I was really prepared, my mind was there uh, and I think physically uh, I suffered it a long way. Uh, and the second time was the other way around. I think I was uh, really ready. Physically, I'd done the race once already. Uh, and uh, I kind of battled in my mind quite a lot to actually finish the, uh, the whole race. So I'm hoping I get both, uh, <laughs> both, both of these things right uh, this time. The Lakeland 100, well, there's two events, so I always have to say this, because the bigger event is actually the 50, and more people take part in the 50 than the 100. And the other thing I should say as well is 100 isn't 100, it's 105. So, yeah, the, the event itself, it's, it's always taken place on the last weekend of July from Coniston, and the 100 is a complete uh, clockwise loop of the Lake District, and the 50-mile option starts at the 55-mile point in the 100, and they run the last 50 miles to get back to Coniston. So the 100 starts at 6 p.m. on the Friday, and then they've got 40 hours to finish. So look after yourself, and this year, I'm sure like me, you described that the event is going ahead, and we've got the opportunity to be here and complete the course. So it's probably not the year for going out at record pace, okay? I'm sure someone will, but it's not the year for going out at record pace. So live in the moment, what do you need to do at that precise moment, at any point on the course, to make sure that you get back here on Sunday with that medal around your neck and become a legend. I am standing here and saying, if you've got nothing better to do for the next 48 hours, let's meet outside at 6 o'clock, run 105 miles, and we'll see you back home on Sunday. The start is pure excitement. It, it just, uh, you feel like you're not even touching the ground, you know. It, it takes a good half an hour before you start, like, okay, I'm actually running. So it's, it's so exciting, like, like no, no other race, to be honest. And that, that overtakes any kind of uh, worry you may have. Every event organised by whoever is unique, whether it's 60 people at a local fell run or whether it's 
2,000 people at the Lake and 50 and Lake and 100, you know. Compared to events of a similar size, it's really hard, but when we organised it for the first few years, we tried to keep it very personal, so you know people and the people come back. So what we wanted to do was to try and keep, I, I suppose, a personal feel to a, to a mass scale event. A couple of friends had been out to France and done the UTMB, which was relatively, the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc, which was relatively new at the time. And they said, ah, oh, it'd be great to do something like that in the Lake District. So we um, sat down with a, a Harvey 1 to 40,000 map of the Lake District, and just kind of drew a loop and said, well, you could do that, 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 and that, or that comes to 105 miles, or that could be close enough. And that's how it started, with about 40, 50 people in the first year. So my, my strategy is to not spend the second night out. The, the first night is okay because you, on the Friday night you get the adrenaline of the race and it's exciting. And so you're hyper aware and uh, trying to find the route and uh, so, you, so you don't get sleeping in that sense. you end up thinking, yeah, I'd like to do it a little bit faster. Uh, and you, well, I always start with that plan. And it kind of mid-race, it turns into, I just want to get to Coniston now, you know, so, so plan A goes out the window and you just uh, get yourself to the next checkpoint. And at least for me, I am, I'm sure competitive runners, they just stick to plan A, but. Yeah. Uh, really tough. Let me tell you you, uh, you prepare a drop bag uh, at the start in Coniston, so you, you give it to uh, in the entrance. Uh, they'll bring it to Delamain, and as you arrive in Delamain, you just sit down, they bring you your drop bag, and you've got all your stuff. So generally, a, a, a kit to look after your, your feet, a nice drink that you like, some nice food, and yeah, change of clothes is amazing as well, brushing your teeth, that type of thing, and you know, off you go again. Endurance events are quite popular now, you know, whether it's Ironman triathlon, whether it's ultra racing, whether it's tough mudder, you know, and that kind of stuff that everybody does. And everybody likes to believe that they're pushing themselves really hard and they're doing stuff that's really tough. But the reality is, unless they're right on the edge of failure, they never truly challenge themselves. We did have some people email us and say, if 50% of the field didn't finish, do you think it's about time you perhaps made this route a bit easier? Which I would think, why the, why the hell would I want to do that? But that, I think, you know, that attitude of, sending, of saying, do you think with such a failure rate that perhaps the course is too tough? Well, no, I don't. I just think you were underprepared and that's the reality of the situation. So if you want to challenge yourself and you want to post on Facebook that you're, oh, I'm doing this because I want to test my limits, then don't moan when your limits are tested. Yes, I do think it's the uh, hardest race in the country. Uh, the, the hardest, but I'd say the, the, the most stunning and the most picturesque and beautiful race in the country. Well, running or any sport, like you were saying, is, is great for mental health. When I was talking about, you know, you discovering yourself and having a good self-talk, but really, yeah, it's, it's going past what you think uh, you could do and finding yourself on the other side and thinking, oh, wow, you know, I didn't know I, I could do this. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a great feeling. And uh, inevitably, you just want to find out more. I think it makes you realize that there's, uh, there's more to you than, than you think. Uh, you, you might think that you, 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 I can only do, you know, 5K, 10K, or, or actually you can do a lot more than you think. Everybody can do a lot more than they, than they think.
talking with uh, other people that you know uh, had finished and it's just incredibly rewarding it's hard to put into words actually just uh, you know you've gone past what you think you could do uh, and I think you, every time you discover yourself a little bit more I think it's about personal challenge because we have people who are breaking course records and we have people who are just trying to finish inside 24 hours or 40 hours so it's very much about personal challenge I remember when we very, very first set this race up in the very first year when Montaigne became involved, Paul, who was the marketing manager then, we were sat in Kentmere Village Hall and it was me and him manning the checkpoint. And I remember him saying, it's about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And I think for me that's, you know, it is, it's about the community and it's about those ordinary people doing something extraordinary which is very individual to them, whether it's getting around just inside the time limits or whether it's winning it.